So, as you might have noticed, Hackster has started giving out the Adafruit Feather module, a custom branded version of this little Wi-Fi enabled board that uses the ESP8266 chip to talk to the internet. It's really exciting, so tell your friends to join and they might be the day's lucky winner. Now that my plug is over, how about we learn how to use this thing? So, let's start with the blink example. The Feather has two LEDs built in. Uh, there's a blue one and a red one. So we're going to upload this really quick, but I'm going to modify it to use pins 0 and 2, which are the red and blue LEDs. They're used for other purposes as well, but you can control them programmatically. So first I'm going to streamline this a little bit like we did on my first code magic video. So I'm going to define a variable, an unchanging integer called mm, blink me. Uh, and that's going to be on pin 0. And I'm going to replace all instances of this pin number with that variable name. If I can spell it correctly. So now our blinking pin is pin 0, and we're going to upload this to our feather. And rather than being straight up under the Adafruit boards, this is actually in your pack of ESP8266 modules. So you may need to install that using the boards manager. And the feather page has more details on that. We won't go into it now because we're going to be super speedy. Pick the huzzah board. Uh, pick your uploading port. Super easy. Um, you know, you can just leave these as they are. And let's hit upload. Still going? But now, you see, we've got our little red LED blinking. Gorgeous! And it's marked with a little number zero on there, so you don't forget. Okay, remember that little blue LED that was blinking while we were uploading? That's on the actual ASP8266 breakout module itself? We're going to blink that next. And that is on pin 2. Thanks to my little change earlier, I can easily modify the 0 to a 2, and it'll change throughout the sketch. And let's upload this slightly changed version. We're still going to keep blinking while it compiles. Here's our little uploading indicator. And we have liftoff. It's that simple. But why would you have an internet-enabled board and not do anything with the internet? This is a slightly modified version of Adafruit's example that they have this brilliant walkthrough. It covers everything. This is just a quick one-shot if you want to know more. Go there. In terms of using this with the Arduino IDE, they give you some code. And it's here, connecting via Wi-Fi. So you can just copy this. It's super easy. And throw it into your editor. What you're going to need to modify are your SSID, or the network name, and your password. So we have an IoT network called Hackster Things, and the password is Internet of Things. So their default connection is to an Adafruit page where you can test your Wi-Fi, but I have set up a little if this then that uh, applet to run each time this thing boots up and it's going to tweet. So you're going to be getting a URL with HTTP, and if you don't understand it, don't worry. What we're doing with it is super simple. So first start by putting maker.ift.com in this line. That basically hooks you up to if this then that's maker channel, which is how you can talk to arbitrary URLs. I've set up an applet that takes input from Arduino via a specific URL, and I'm going to call this feather B because I already made one called feather A, and I don't want to do the same thing again. And now when if receives that ping from my feather, it's going to do something specific. So let's have it post to Twitter. And what's it going to say? I want it to say... Wording is so crucial.
And now we have to find a suitable image to go along with it. I'm going to choose Beaker from the Muppets, because he's fantastic. Yes. And I think I can just grab this URL. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to throw in there. The final applet is if the maker event feather B is triggered by my feather, then post that tweet with the image to my Twitter account. And it's going to be ridiculous. Now, our function name is feather underscore B. All of this stuff is things that talk to the serial monitor, uh, which is this guy, to tell you what's going on. And so it tells you when it's connecting and uh, appends the name of the uh, access point or network that you're connecting to. After that, it tries to connect. And it gives you a little loading bar even to show how long it's been trying for. After that, it gives you an empty line, and you get a Wi-Fi connected notification and the IP address that your feather has on your network once that's connected. So if this and that gives you an HTTPS secure URL to use for this, however, uh, actually getting the feather to send HTTPS is a whole other ballgame. So we're going to send it in an insecure way, which is not always a great idea, we're only using it because all I'm doing is posting a silly image to Twitter. So this is where the rest of that URL goes that I get from if. And you can get this URL by going to the Maker channel and hitting the Settings button, which I'm not going to do right now because it'll show you my key. And that would be a bad tutorial. I've now replaced the placeholder my key with one that I actually use, and I'm going to upload it to the board. So once this is finished uploading, it's going to restart, and at that point, it's going to send that request. Oh, you know what? It might do it multiple times. <laughs> hmm. It'll also delay 5,000 milliseconds, which is only 5 seconds. Um, and then, presumably, it will try and do it again. So we've got to unplug it pretty quick. All right, we're done uploading. Time to check and see whether this has worked or not. It has run four times! Oh, dear. <laughs> Yep, I have some deleting to do, but it works! Now go forth and annoy the masses with repetitive tweeting, or I guess you could increase the delay. Share your projects, we want to see what you make, and tell your friends to join Hackster so you can share the free bounty.